when a fiber optic scope is introduced into the trachea and a standard endotracheal tube is railroaded downward along the scope toward the trachea, the forward end of the tube frequently catches on the right vocal cord or the right arytenoid cartilage. This happens because the forward end of a standard endotracheal tube is side beveled so that as it is railroaded through the larynx, the leading edge of the tube overhangs and comes down on the right side of the larynx where it tends to collide with local anatomical structures. Those right side anatomical structures then slide into and are trapped in a gap which exists between the leading edge of the tube and the scope. Any further advancement of the tube after such catching of its tip on the laryngeal anatomy can result in significant injury to the patient. How is the Parker tube designed to avoid such dangerous hang-ups in the larynx? First, it has a tapered tip which is centered rather than side beveled. As this centered tip is railroaded along a scope, it travels approximately along the midline of the scope rather than down one side of the scope. This pathway would carry it into the glottic opening with minimal risk of striking any lateral structures such as the vocal cords or arytenoids. Furthermore, the Parker tube tip is curved inward slightly so that it tends to lie tightly against the scope. Between the tube tip and the scope, there is no significant gap in which anatomical structures could become caught. Some doctors have told me that to minimize trauma to the larynx, they soak the end of the standard endotracheal tube in warm water before railroading it into the larynx. I've been soaking the tips of a standard tube and a Parker tube in warm water. Now watch what happens when we perform the railroading technique again. I'm going to thread the standard endotracheal tube onto the simulated fiber bundle and as I railroad it down against my thumb, the leading edge of the tube gets hung up even worse than before. Why? Because its softness allows it to get pulled even further from the fiber bundle and deformed, creating an even bigger gap which can trap even more of the laryngeal anatomy. Now let's take the warmed Parker tube. Notice that its tip also became very soft and flexible. However, this does not diminish its ability to hug the fiber bundle or travel along the midline of the fiber bundle. In other words, heating the tip of the Parker tube does not appear to have any effect on its ability to avoid collisions with the laryngeal anatomy which I have been told occur more than 50% of the time with standard tubes.